Uh, I'm probably I'm going to hold homework um, Zoom sessions most likely. Um, you know, outside of class, but um, we'll we'll also cover homework at that time as well. But the vapor pressure of water at 25 degrees C is 23.8 millimeters mercury. Write KP for the vaporization of water with pressures in the atmosphere. <clears throat> The vaporization of water, the first thing is uh, we need an equation, the equilibrium equation for that. And for vaporization of water, the equilibrium equation is going to be H2O liquid goes to H2O gas. Now they want us to write a Kp value, so Kp is going to equal the partial pressure of the product, so the partial pressure of the reactant. So we're going to have the partial pressure of H2O gas. It's going to raise the first column. Why, why is it, uh, um, what do you mean by separate the H2O? Like, H2O liquid goes to the H2 gas plus uh, oxygen gas. Oh, uh, because it's a, that would be the decomposition. If it's a decomposition of water, then we would decompose it into hydrogen and oxygen. Now, that would be a redox reaction, but this is just. Um, vaporizing it is evaporating it and so um, over here this is pure liquid pure liquids you know just have an be one and so it would just be that now they're asking for the kp in atmospheres and so we have just have to convert 23.8 um, millimeters mercury to atmospheres is that okay for this one and then we have to calculate Kc for this. Okay, other questions? So did you have a chance to look at that problem with the cyanide complex? Uh-huh. Over one. Except it has to be in, in <clears throat> atmospheres. And so the partial pressure of H2O is 23.8 millimeters of mercury when we convert it to atmospheres. And KP is dimensionless, it doesn't have units, but we got to make sure we use the correct units. Um, is calculating it, and then we drop the units after that. And so it would be 23.8 divided by 716. 0.031 is So this is KP in units of atmosphere. There's also KP in units of bar, which would be different. Than the number would be different. And so this is like that. Kc is equal to Kp times, uh, actually, divided by Rt, Kp is m, Rt, delta n of gas. Here we have to note that this Kp is based on atmospheres. So the R, that will dictate which R we use. So we're going to use 0 0.082, liters atmosphere per mole Kelvin times the temperature. So what was the temperature for this one? It's 298. Okay, again, the units, we just have to make sure the units work out. Atmospheres, atmospheres, it works out. Kelvin, Kelvin. Delta in a gas is what? Well, actually, we went from no gas to one molar gas. So it's not zero, it's going to be one, plus one. And so this would be to the first. It's not going to change anything. But if it were zero, then it would drop out entirely. And so we can just go ahead and calculate that. And it's going to be this divided by 0. 0.8206 divided by 298. And so our 
KP value 0 0.0313 or KC value 0 0.0028. So this would be a molar of it. Okay, it's because this KP is based on atmospheres. Normally we would, but it, it, it told us to base it on atmospheres. If we had to base it on bars, I would have done it 1.01325 okay. bar per atmosphere and changed it. Uh, it's a little bit. Um, Confusing because a lot of the data is in atmospheres. Yeah. And so when you read a KP, you aren't really sure is that in atmospheres or that in bars. It makes a difference um, if delta N of gas is not equal to zero. If delta N of gas is equal to zero, then it doesn't matter. And bar and atmosphere will be the same because you multiply by the same conversion factor on the top as you would on the bottom. And they cancel one another out. Okay, um, other questions? Delta N of gas? Yeah. Delta N of gas is just the change in the number of moles of gas. So, how many moles of gas do we have here? Zero moles of gas, because this is a liquid. Over here we have one mole of gas. So what was the change? The change in going from left to right is plus one mole of gas. That's how we figure it out. Just to look at the difference between the left side and the right side of the equation. And what you have to add or subtract to get those delta N of gas. So did anybody try this um, problem? This isn't it, sorry. This is from our book, actually. Just thinking, uh, I wanted the one. Here it is. This one. All right. So the problem is uh, with the cyano complex here. So let's take a look at this. Come in here. tetracyanoferrate-3 complex here. So when we look at the Kc for this, which is Kf, it's huge, 1 times 10 to 42. F is, is made um, reserved for, uh, again, the Lewis acid base reaction between the metal acid and the Base, which are the ligands. And so I wanted you to set this up like this 0.100 and 3.00 mole. It's similar to the previous problem. And so we could do this um, here like this. 
we could just say, well, it's got to shift to the right because there's nothing here, and so we got to make some product. In fact, this should be mostly all product, right? And so if we did the change here, um, this would be minus x molar, minus 6x molar, because it's a 1 to 6 ratio. And this would be plus x molar. And so at equilibrium, we're going to have 0.100 minus x molar, 3.00 minus 6x molar, and x molar over here. And then we can plug that into the KC equation, which is going to be the concentration of the cyan complex, and divided by the concentration of the iron, 3 plus the concentration of the cyanide, the sixth. Now we call this free iron, and we call this complex iron. We call this free cyanide and complex cyanide. Just, uh, you want to label those? Okay. And then we look at the math for this. The math is going to be, okay, this is going to be x on the top divided by 0.100 minus x divided by 3.00 minus 6x to the 6. So we looked at this. This is a seventh order polynomial. It has x to the 7. Um, could you solve this? Yeah, technically. Um, yeah, it's going to be pretty hard to solve. You know, so it's sort of polynomial. And so we need some kind of trick to solve this. What was the trick that we're going to use to solve this? Reset it? Yeah, we should reset this. This is too hard. Too hard. So we can just try resetting it right from the get-go. We should something clued me in to we should have tried to reset this right from the beginning. What clued me in to that? What clued me in was this K. When I look at the K, it should be all product or all reactant? It should be all product, but when we look at the initial conditions, it's all reactant, which means there's going to be huge shift or huge change to the right. Even if we did solve this, the problem with this is since there's such a huge change to the right, we have round negative errors. And when the rounding errors come, we're going to lose practically all of this. So it's going to be 0 0.0999999999. And depending depends on how many digits your calculator can carry. Some calculators can only carry 10 digits. If it goes beyond 10, 10 nines, then forget it. What's going to happen is or actually 9.9 um, nine in this case, what's going to happen is it's going to round to 0.100. If it rounds to 0.100, then we're going to have zero there. And if we have zero there, it's not at equilibrium. Because it's going to be products over reactants. If there's a zero in the reactants, it's going to be infinity. Our K value is going to be. So we should have reset this right from the get-go because what, one of the things we do is we try to get the initial conditions to mimic the equilibrium conditions as close as possible. And so in that case, resetting it makes sense because um, here, we're going to reset this completely to the, to the right. And so what's the limiting region here? Iron. So we're going to lose all the iron. We lose all the limiting reagent. And then how much cyanide will we lose? Well, for every 0.1 iron, we're going to lose six times that. In other words, it's going to be 0.6. And then we're going to gain 0.1 over here. And so our new initial conditions are going to be zero. We're going to lose all the limiting reagent. And then uh, this is going to go to 2.400, which we're only allowed to do that. So it's a 2.40 molar and a 0.100. Actually, let me go to the same. All right, now what we did was we, we pushed all the atoms downhill, as many as we could. We couldn't push all of them because we didn't have enough iron to react with the cyanide. You know, it has to go down together, the complex. 
And so some of the free cyanide is still up here, but that's all right. And then we push all the atoms downhill, and then we're going to see how many atoms can make it back up the hill, which is going to be very small, right? Because it's too steep of a climb. And so here the change is going to be going back up hill. So this is going to be plus x molar. This is going to be plus 6x molar. For every one of these that breaks apart, I get one iron and six cyanide. And this is going to be minus x molar here. And so at equilibrium, I'm going to have x molar, 2.400 plus 6x molar, and then 0.100 minus x molar. Okay, now let's see what the math looks like here. And so it's going to be 0.100 minus x divided by x times 2.400 plus 6x to the 6. And so the situation is it's still a 7th order polynomial and it's still going to be too hard to solve. But that's not the only reason we do resetting. The other reason we do resetting is this. If very few, because this is a, such a big climb, if very few of these can make it up, we say that that population that can make it back up is negligible compared to the population that's stuck down here. And so what we can say is that this is the simplifying assumption. And, um, the simplifying assumption just states that the change is going to be very small. Simplifying assumption change is negligible. We're just guessing this right now. You know, we're just guessing if the change is negligible. And therefore, if I have 0.100 minus x, 0.100 minus x means, you know, most of the population is where it wants to be. It's just a tiny, tiny population that can actually make it back up the hill, which we call x. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to ignore that and just say 0.100 minus x is going to be about 0.100. The top. Now x is going to be significant because x is compared to zero. If you have nothing, you know, that's not anything significant. So we can't drop the x here. But you know, how much additional cyanide are we going to get? Well, very little. You know, even though it's six times as much, you know, it's still very little. And so what we're going to say is 2.400 plus 6x is just going to be about 2.400. And so, normally when people do this SA, which SA stands for Simplifying Assumption Changes to Negligible, they usually say that X is going to be much smaller than 0.100, and that 6X is going to be much smaller than 2.4. And therefore, we can ignore the changes in these binomials. And then we can solve for X here. And so, solving for X now, you look at the math, it's very easy because x is going to equal 0 0.1. 0 0.1 divided by 1 times 10 to the 42. Divided by 2.4. So we get 4.16, uh-huh. What is the count the six power? Oh, I, I, I shouldn't have dropped the six power. It's got to still be thing. It's still got to be that. And so we'll do divided by um, 2.4 to the six power. 2.4 to the six power, I'm going to keep it twice, I think. Okay, and then I get 3.78 times 10 to the negative 47. Is that what you guys get? No? Okay, let me try it again. Then. All possible for problems.
All right. How about um, this one? 3.014 times 10 to the negative 45. Can anybody get that? Five point two three times ten to the negative forty six. Is that what everybody got? Okay. Five point two three times ten to the negative forty six. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna double check the answer again here. And so out of this population of point one hundred, how many made it back up the hill? Well, five point two three times ten to the negative forty six. So the concentration of the free iron here is five point two three. Actually, we're allowed, um, that's 10 to the negative 46. Barely any, right? That's pretty negligible compared to 0.100. Um, how much uh, cyanide did we get? We got, we're going to get 2.400 plus 6 times that. Um, So if you punch this in your calculator, what does it come out to? 6 times 5.23 times 10 to the negative 46 plus 2.4. And what does it come out to? Your calculator can't handle that many digits, right? What, what did it come out to? 2.4, so your calculator has round-off error because it's too many digits to handle. And so what that means is that the simplifying assumption is pretty good. You know, 2.4 plus 6x is about 2.4. And then what about 0.100? Punch this in your calculator. 0 0.100, 0 0.1 minus 5.23. Let's see if your calculator can handle this many digits times 10 to the minus 46. What did it come out to? 0.1. And so that's a round off error from your calculator, basically. It, it just, um, this is rounded. Because it would have been 0.09999, but something nine to and I thought my calc because I'm using my phone, I thought my calculator could carry more digits, but it can't. You know, if I did an Excel, it probably could, you know, because Excel could carry over 100 digits. And so if, let's see if I did this in Excel. But most calculators are going to have a finite limit to how many digits. They can't carry an infinite number of digits. It used to be eight digits. You know, and now it's 10 digits, I think, you know, because my old Casio could only carry eight, so it'd round off really early, you know. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and double check our calculation. And so how do you double check the calculation? Yeah. So let's go ahead and calculate the K based on these concentrations here. So it's going to be 0 0.100 divided by 5.23 times 10 to the minus 46 times 2.4 to the 6. Let's see what that comes out to. So I'm going to probably do 2.4 to the 6 first. 2.4. the 6 times 5.23 times 10 to the negative 46 invert that times 0.1 and what did you get? 1 times 10 to the 40 seconds you got 1 times 10 to the 40 seconds? Wow, I am, I don't know, what, one point what? One point? One point zero? Yeah. That's 10 to the 40 seconds. That, that's pretty good then. Did everybody get that? All right, so we're good. 
So even with this, you know, this just shows you that the simple going assumption really worked really well on this particular case because, and this is what we see in it, it's negligible change. And so this was a very, very steep drop here. Take a long drop. Yeah, yeah, my number is only <laughs> off. <laughs> 1.7 times 10 to the 41. Uh, you know, I, I lost my regular calculator, and so this home calculator will. Sure. Okay, so do you see how much easier that makes the math? I mean, compared to solving a seventh order polynomial, which would be horrendous, it'd take you, it'd take me. I don't know if I could even solve it, you know. Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at another problem here. Let's try number 90 here. Okay, number 90 um, is a redox reaction. We have um, two iron three plus a mercury one goes to two iron two plus two mercury two. So just a redox. Iron three will be the oxidizer, mercury one will be the reducer. Iron 3 um, takes an electron to go to iron 2, and then mercury 1 gives an electron to mercury 2. Kc for this one is equal to 9.14 times 10 to the minus 6. If you see 9.14 times 10 to the minus 6, which side is, is favored? The reactant side, the product side, or neither side? Which side? Which side? Yeah, it's a small, it's minus six. If this were positive six, then I'd say the product side would be favored. But this one looks like the reactant side is favored. And so they give us these initial concentrations. Uh -huh. No, KC is the ratio of the products over the reactant. Yeah. Yeah, um, KC is disproportional to the product. Big numbers favor the product, small numbers favor the product. This is a small number, one to a million. The iron 3 and the mercury 1 are 0.5 thousand molar. And the iron 2 and the mercury 2 are 0.03 thousand molar. And so we just figured that the um, reactants are favored, right? And so which which way, if we had this, which way do you think it's going to shift? Or which way do you think it's going to direction? You know, it looks like we already have a bunch of product here. And so it looks like we have a bunch of product here and the reactants are favored. So it looks like some of the reactant, um, the products are going to fall down to the reactants, doesn't it? Should be. Some of them, because we have a lot of product here, probably should fall back down to reactant, you know, in establishing equilibrium. And so, you know, my guess would be it would be something like this. My guess would be I would, you know, I got some, so I, I expect this to be reactant favored, so I'm going to go plus 2x 
plus x minus 2x minus 2x molars. And so um, that's what it looks like. But you have to be very careful because um, of these, you know. Um, you know, it's going to be squared, squared here, right? And then it's going to be squared into the first power here. And so that makes things tricky in predicting. If it were squared, 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 then yeah, maybe. But what we can do is we can check this. You know, this is what I assumed is going to happen because reactants are favored. But there's a way that we could check this just to make sure. And the way we could check this is by calculating the reaction quotient. The reaction quotient is just what is your initial ratio? So this is what we call Q. And um, this is a QC, means we got concentrations. So QC is just going to be the iron 2 plus concentration squared, initial, or given, whatever you're given, times the mercury 2 plus concentration squared, this initial, divided by the iron 3 plus concentration squared initial, and then the initial mercury one concentration to the first power. And so let's see what that ratio is. And so this is going to come out to 0.03,000 squared times 0.03,000 squared divided by the iron three, which is 0.5,000 squared, and the mercury one, which is 0.5,000. Yeah. And so, um, you know what? Uh, you know, who knows? I might have to be equilibrium. It's possible. Let's take a look. This comes out to. So I'm going to go 0.03 to the 4. 0.03. Squared, squared, divided by 0.5 squared, divided by 0.5. It's 0.4 equals 25, 6. So I get 6.48 times 10 to the minus 6. You know what? I'm really close to equilibrium. If, if QC equals KC, then I'm done. It's at equilibrium. There's going to be no change. And so if the initial given concentration ratio matches the equilibrium concentration ratios, then there should be no change. If QC is greater than KC, then I have too much product. You know, my, my ratio is too, too large, and I have too much product. That's what I thought. I thought I had too much product. I was guessing I had too much product. And so I was guessing if I had too much product, it's going to go to the left. Uh huh. Yeah. You use Q to just, you know, maybe we don't have to do a calculation. You know, because if we already had equilibrium here, and we went ahead and solved for x, x is going to come out zero, and nothing changed. You know? So we just saved a, a little bit of time here. Then um, reaction goes to the left. Goes to the left. And that's what I thought was going to happen. Because I looked at this number and I thought, oh, that's a really small number. We have to have all the reactants and product. But here, we, it seems like we had a significant amount of product. So I thought it was going to roll back downhill and the opposite way. But if QC is less than KC, then we don't have enough product. You know, This ratio is too small, so we've got to make more product to reach equilibrium. And then reaction goes to the right. Reaction goes right. And so um, I made a mistake here. The reaction does not go left. QC is less. We're at 6.48. We have to increase it to 9.14. So I made a mistake. This, this is wrong. This is the wrong direction. 
the correct change is we got to go to the right because our ratio is too small. We're at 6.48 something. We need to get to 9.14. And so QC is less. Therefore, we got to lose some reactant and make more product. So this is going to be minus 2x molar, minus x molar, plus 2x molar, plus 2x molar. So if we're ever uncertain which direction it goes, then we can calculate Q. Most of the time we don't need to calculate Q because this is zero. We can't go below zero concentration. If we go below zero concentration, we get into negative concentrations, which means you have to weigh out negative grams. Because my initial guess was wrong. I was guessing we were going to go backwards. This one tells me the downhill is backwards. Most of the atoms should be down on the left. And so I was thinking this is too much. Some of those have to go back down. So I was guessing, you know, that um, because these are 0.03,000, I was guessing that some of those will go back down here and we'll make more here because this is a 1 to million, you know, a 1 to 10 million ratio. Yeah. But it's a 1 to 10 million ratio, you know. Um, this is close to 10 times 10 to minus 6, which would be 1 times 10 to minus 7. So, um, and so I was guessing that if we had 1 to 10 million, then it doesn't look right, does it? But the thing is, overall, this is fourth order on the top, third order on the bottom. So overall, it's fourth order on the top, third order on the bottom, which screws things up. The map gets screwed up, so it's harder to fit. You know, when it's like fourth order on top and second order on the bottom, or second order on top, fourth order on the bottom, it, it's non linear, so it's hard to predict. And so the, the, the surefire way of determining it is by calculating Q, which we just did. And Q showed us that we don't have enough product because the ratio is too small. Uh -huh. So less reactive than one. Yeah. Less reacting, more product, will make this number bigger. This number right now is too small, 6.48. We need to bump it up to 9.14. So that's the reason why. And so equilibrium, we're going to have 0.5 thousand minus 2x molar. 0.5 thousand minus x molar. 0.03 thousand. Plus two x molar and point oh three thousand plus two x molar. Okay, so now we're going to go back to K. The KC is going to be point oh three thousand plus two x quantity squared times point oh three thousand plus two x quantity squared divided by point. 5,000 minus 2x <coughs> quantity squared and 0.5,000 thousand x. This came very, very close to being an easy problem to solve. You know, if this last binomial here was square, then it would be super easy to solve this. Is if this last binomial were squared, then I could just take the square root of both sides, and then we just have a first order equation, which would be easy. But since this last binomial wasn't squared, then I have a fourth order equation, which is not so easy. Fourth order equations are hard to solve, right? Well, you know, I'm pretty close. I'm really close. Look how close I am. You know, 6.48 times 10 minus 6 versus 9.14 times 10 minus I expect the change to be small. If I expect the change to be small, then I could ignore the change. Let's just, like in the last problem, remember in the last problem we said the change was negligible? So why can't I do the same thing here? I'll just say that the change is negligible because I'm so close to equilibrium. But if I look at the change here and ignore the change. 
So 0.03 thousand plus 2x is just 0.03 thousand. Both of these. 0.5 thousand minus 2x is just 0.5 thousand. And 0.5 thousand minus x is just 0.5 thousand. So if I ignore the change here, 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 and here, what, you know what happens? The x disappears. If the x disappears, then how can I solve for x when there's no x to solve for? And so I can't, the simplifying assumption fails here because x, no x to solve. There's no x to solve for. And so that trick is out. Are there any other tricks I can use to solve this? Well, that brings us back to resetting. Resetting is a common trick. There's two goals in resetting. One goal is to get as many zeros for your initial as possible. The more zeros you have, the fewer binomials you have to multiply out. The second goal of resetting is to make the simplifying assumption more likely to work. How do you make it more likely to work? You want the change to be small. So if we reset everything to the right here, would the change be small? And so what we're going to do is this is the situation we're looking at. If we reset everything to the right up here, will the change be small? No, the change is not going to be small because everything's going to roll downhill. So if we put everything at the top here, the change is going to be big as most of the atoms go down because of this, right? And so what we want to do is we don't want to reset everything to the right in this case. We want to reset everything to the left and then see how much can make it up the hill. Does that make sense? And so in this case, we should have just went ahead and reset this. We should reset it whenever we see it's biased towards one side or the other. And so let's start this problem over again. And I'm not even going to bother calculating Q. There's no reason to calculate Q if I reset it. There's no reason for calculating Q if I reset it because I know the direction it's going to go, I'm going to push everything downhill and then see how much makes it back up the hill. And so to push it downhill, well, which side is downhill? The left side in this case, not the right side in the last case. And so I have to look. Um, which one of these is the limiting reagent? None. This is stoichiometric, so I have just the right amount. And so when I reset this, it's going to look like this. So let's go ahead and reset. I'm going to lose all of this. I call this minus 2y. Minus 2y. Over here, I'm going to have plus 2y, or plus 0.03 thousand plus 2y. And over here, I'm going to have what? Plus what? Yeah, this would be just plus y, which is going to be half of that, so it's going to be plus 0 0.01500, rather than 0 0.03 thousand. So this is plus y. So now I'm going to push all the atoms downhill and then see what fraction can make it up. And so my new initial conditions are going to be, okay, this is going to go to 0 0.5300. Well, this is going to go to 0 0.5150. Well, this is going to go to 0 molar. This is going to go to 0 molar. Okay, now I don't have to calculate Q. I know the direction this is going to go. Which way is it going to go? It's going to go... Oh, yeah, to the right. It has to go to the right because I can't go below zero. And below zero would be negative. And, um, you know, this would be it would be great for diets. You know, I mean, if I want it, um, I'll just have a negative uh, thousand calories you know, or something like that. You know? 
that would be nice. <laughs> but uh, anyway, here it's got to go to the right. So this is going to be minus two x. I don't know how much. You know, we're just figuring out some small population is going to make it back up the hill, and that is going to be minus two x minus x. This is going to be plus two x molar and plus two x molar. So once the equilibrium is established, I'll have 0 0.5300 minus 2x, 0.5150 minus x, 2x more, and 2x more. Okay. All right, now uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the Kc. The Kc will be the iron 2 concentration squared. So that's going to be 2x quantity squared and the mercury 2 concentration squared. So this is going to be 2x quantity squared divided by the iron 3 concentration squared. So this is going to be 0.5300 minus 2x squared divided by the mercury 1 concentration, which would be 0.515, 5150 minus x to the first. Again, if this were squared, then it would be easy. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes everything's squared here, and it's the simplest is taking the square root. But we're out of luck. The, the situation here, though, is this. If we put all the atoms downhill here, we don't expect much change, you know, because it's uphill now. And so the simplifying assumption is more likely to work in this case. And so we're just going to go ahead and try the simplifying assumption. The simplifying assumption, which is called SA, so this is going to be about equal here, is this. We're going to say that, you know, we start off with a population of 0.5300 at the bottom. And then we're going to lose 2x. We're going to say that 2x is going to be a very small population out of the 5300. So what we say is that 2x is much smaller than 0.53. We're just guessing. You know, I don't know. And then the same thing over here. That means x is going to be small compared to 0.515. If the first one holds, the second one definitely holds because this is double. And so what that's going to simplify into is, is this. We're going to get 2x squared, 2x squared. And then the 0.5300 minus 2x is just going to be 0.5300. We're just going to say that that population that makes it back up the hill is so small. We can ignore it. We can ignore it just for calculating x, but we don't want to ignore it for calculating equilibrium concentrations. Here we're going to, we want to know, you know what what that population that actually made it back. And then over here, we're going to have 0.515 minus x. That's just going to be 0.515. So this is going to be squared. This is going to be first. Okay, now how does the math look? The math looks a lot easier, doesn't it? And so let's try this here. So I'm going to do 0.53. I'm going to do 9.14 times 10 minus 6. 9.14 times 10 to minus 6 times 0.53 squared times 0.515 equals, and then divided by 4 times 4, 16 divided by 16, and then take the fourth root of that. So I'll just square root it twice. And so, yeah, the math is a lot easier, and I get x is equal to 0.01695. So, what I want to look at here is... Um, this and 2x, what is 2x? Since I have it in my calculator, let's multiply by 2 here. 0.0339. Is 
zero. And so 2x um, is 0 0.03, and my initial is 0.53. So if I start off with 53 and I lose 3, is that a negligible loss or is that a significant loss? If you start off with 53 and you lose 3, is that significant or negligible? Well, you start, I'm starting, it, it, you know, it could be more significant. In other words, compared to the last one, if you look at the last problem, you know, if we start off with 100, we lost almost nothing. Right? In this case, we're, we're starting to lose a more significant amount. And so here, we, we need to validate the simplifying assumption. And this is just an arbitrary cutoff. And the arbitrary cut is 5%. And so if the percent change is less than 5%, so let's say less than 5% of the population has tobacco to kill, then we'll call that negligible. We lost, we lost less than 5%. Blame that guy. Then SA is valid. However, if the percent change is greater than 5%, then SA is not valid. And so I don't know what the percent change is, so let's go ahead and calculate it. The percent change, we'll look for the first one, is going to be the change over the initial times 100%. So we just calculated the change here as the 2x. And so the change here is going to be 0.0339 over 0.53 times 100. So this is um, the percent change for um, the 0.53 minus 2x. 0.5300 minus 2x. 2x is the change here. So I'm getting a 0 0.0339 divided by 0 0.53 times 100. This comes out to 6.39%. Okay, we can calculate the percent change for the other binomial, which is this one here. The change is x, the initial is 5150. And so the percent change for the other one should be smaller. It's going to be 0 0.5150 minus x. And the percent change will be the change. In this case, the change is just x 0 0.01695 over the initial, which is the 0 0.5150 times 100%. So 0 0.01695 divided by 0 0.515 times 100, 3.29. And so this one's okay. This is less than 5%, but this one's not good. This one's over 5%. And so what that means is the SA failed. Because of this percentage here. It was too big, you know, it was too big. That, that means there are too many make it back up the hill. So we can't, you know, if we ignore it in calculating X, then that means the error that we're introducing in their calculation is too big. We can accept a small amount of error. So we can't use this, unfortunately. That's a fail. So do we have any other tricks that we can use? 
or do we just have to try to solve it? Um, Unfortunately, you know, this works a lot of the time, and it's really useful, but it didn't work in this case. But, hold on, on my side. Okay, this side? Yeah. Um, there's one more trick that we can use. This is the last resort. Mm -hmm. Actually, I needed one of those numbers. Shoot, that's all. That's still not there. The one final trick is called uh, the method of successive approximations. you might have used before as the guess and check method. This is in our book. It's in Appendix A of our book. The method of successive approximation. So what are we going to do with the method of successive approximations? Let me show you. What we know, we know KC. Should equal 9.14 times 10 to the minus 6. And it's going to equal, um, let me simplify this one here. We'll just use this equation. This equation is correct for this ice table. And so it's going to be um, 2x squared times 2x squared will give us 16x to the 4. So Kc is equal to 16x to the 4. Divided by 0.5300 minus 2x squared. Divided by 0 0.5150, 5150 minus x first. Okay, in the method of successive approximations, what we're going to do is we're going to make a table where we guess x and then calculate k. And what we want to do is, we know what k is supposed to equal. k is supposed to equal 9.14 times 10 to the minus 6. And so we want to guess an x value that gives us a k value of 9.14 times 10 to the minus 6. The situation is, okay, where do we start? What's your first guess? So give me an, an X to guess. Yeah, so we want to plug the X in here and get 9.14. Maybe um, 3 times 10 to the negative 8, do you think? Or how about um, 1.89 times 10 to the minus 4? Or, uh-huh. Shouldn't we just use whatever we got? 
Yeah, actually, we were close. If you look at this, the top was 5%. We got 6.3. So it was close. So that means the X that we calculated, what was the X that we calculated for the SA? The X that we calculated for the S SA was 0 0.01695. Right here. X was equal to 0 0.01695. And it was close, but not close enough. And so what we're going to do is, I don't want to carry four digits in my calculator, so the first X I'm going to guess is, this is close to 0 0.017. So let's just go with 0.017. So if we guess an X value of 0 0.017, because we have a good starting place, otherwise, you know, it's just some random guess, and I'm going to be guessing for a long time. Then what we're going to do is we're going to plug that in here. So what I'll do here is... I go 0.017, I'm, I'm going to go squared squared, that's my calculator, times 16 equals that, divided by parentheses 0.53 minus a double this, so double that would be 0.034, so minus 0.034, close parentheses, square that, divided by point, or parentheses 0.55 minus 0.017, close parentheses, equals, and I get 10.9 times 10 to the minus 6. That's pretty close. You know, it should be 9.14, I got 10.9, so I'm not that far off. So it's a little bit on the big side, um, I probably should guess a smaller x. Right, and so what should we go with for my next guess? Yeah, let's try that, 0 And then tell me what you calculate. Let me know when somebody gets it. So the second one I got 8.4, 7 times 10 to the minus 6. You got that too? Okay. So um, it's between 0.016 and 0.017. Which, what is it closer to? So this is like 8.5, that's like 11. So it looks like to be closer to 0.016. So what do you want to go with, in this case, 0.016? If we go with 0.0165, that's kind of in the middle here. And so we're going from 8.5 to 11. So in the middle of that would be closer to like 10. Or, you know, and so maybe 0.016, we need to be closer to this. So maybe 0.016. Three, maybe? You want to try three? 0.0163? Let's try that. So 0.0163. 
because it's going to be closer to 16 than it is to 17. And so we'll just go with that. So I'm going to um, point 0163 squared squared times 16 equal divided by 0.53 minus double this. So double that would be 0 0.326. 0 0.0326. Close parentheses, square that, divided by parentheses 0.515 minus 0.0163. Okay, 9.15, who cares to one digit? 9.154 times 10 to the minus 6. So close, you know, because we need to be 9.14. And so this is just a little bit too big. A little bit, should we go with 162? Let's try 162. Okay, if we do um, 0 0.162 squared squared times 16 divided by parentheses 0 0.53 minus 2 times that would be 34. So. 324, so 0 0.0324, minus 0 0.0324, close parentheses, square that, divided by point, oops, divided by parentheses, 0 0.515 minus 0.0162, close parentheses. What did you get? Um, 8.92. 8.92 times 10 to the minus 6. Now we're getting farther away. You see that? And so it's got to be very close to 163. So what do you want to go with? It's almost right on 163. So let's go just a little bit lower. So what would be just a little bit lower? Yeah, let's try that. Let's go with 0 0.01629. Let's see if that preserves us. So point zero one six two nine square square times sixteen equal divided by parentheses point five three oops, minus double this so three two point eight point four three two point eight plus parentheses square that divided by point eight. Point parentheses point five one five minus point one zero one two nine. And uh, what did you get? Nine point one three zero times ten to the minus six. Wow. Okay, so it's between thirty and twenty nine. Do you see that? So 30 gives us 15, 29 gives us 13. So it looks like it's kind of in the middle of that. So what do you want to do? Maybe slightly less than middle because that's 54. This is, I mean, this is 15, four, this is 13, oh. And so right kind of in the middle, but maybe slightly higher than middle, midway point. So slight, or like slightly less than the midway point. So slightly less than the midway point would be what? Between 29 and 30 it would be 16294. Go with that and see if that works. So between, um, so we'll go 29 to 30, 294. Try that. Okay, so I'm going to go with um, 0 0.016294. Okay, so square square times 16 equals divided by parentheses 0 0.53 minus two, double this. So that's going to be 32588. 32588. 
0.032588. Close parentheses, square that, divided by parentheses 0.515 minus 0.016294. 0.016294. And then what did you get? 9.140 times 10 to the minus 6. So we're good there. I wanted to get a 9.140. Um, I, I, I didn't want to get a 9. I wanted this one to be a 0. If this one came out, let's say 144, then I would have changed it one more time. Um, try it. All right, so how many iterations did it take us? Is it one, two, three, four, five, six? So it's pretty good. A lot easier than solving that. And so this is what we get for the x. Um, we get x is equal to 0 0.016294. And so now let's go ahead and plug that in over here. This is going to be 5300 minus point. Oops, I made a mistake. Do you see my mistake? This should be 2x. I only subtracted x here. So this is not right. I need to subtract them. Let's do it again. Double it. So doubling that would be um, 0 0.032588. But before I do that, let me just put this one 513706. This one will be, let me screw this one up to 5150. Let me try that again. 515 minus 0 0.016294. Yeah, okay. 0.49. Okay. Going back to this one, that's 0 0.53 minus 0 0.032588, which is 2x. This comes out to 0 0.497412. Okay. And then 2x, um, just calculate over there, 2x is 0 0.032588. And this is the same point, so three, two, five, eight, eight, four. All right, now let's double check this calculation. We can double check it by plugging in into K. So the K is going to equal point zero three two five eight eight. Okay, it's going to be squared squared, which is going to be the four. Divided by 0 0.4974. 1, 2. Squared. Divided by 0 0.49876. The first. So let's try this one. So I got 0 0.032588. Squared, squared, and then divided by 0.4974 squared. 
Did we drop the square? No, I squared it here. I squared it here. And punch it out and see. Did, did you guys get this also? I don't know. I I I guess you're familiar with these numbers in my calculator. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, oh, which calculator do you have? Ti. Ti thirty x. All right. Um, try this. Uh, Um, let's try uh, this here, point, point oh, 0.016294, point oh, 0.016294, and then squared, and squared again, and then I get point seven zeros, 0.704, do you have them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then divided by, and then open parentheses, point five three. Minus, okay, double this is going to be 0.032588. So divided by 0.03? No, um, you're going to do divided by parentheses uh -huh. 0 0.53 minus 0 0.032588. Do you have that? Yeah. And then close parentheses uh -huh. and then squared. Okay. So you're just squaring what's in the parentheses. Right. I got 0.2474. Do you have that? I have 2.84, 10 to the negative 7. No. Okay, something went wrong there. 0.53 minus 0.0325. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hit the equal sign. You get after you hit equal. All right, I'll, I'll take a look at it. Um, yeah, it could burn. Let's see. Yeah, something is definitely not quite right with that. Let's try one more problem, though, before. You can take a look at number 40. And uh, number 40 is going to be this dinitrogen tetroxide here, nitrogen dioxide equilibrium. Do some here. And this is actually a Lewis acid base reaction. There's no change in oxidation state here. And, um, and it says the left flask is at equilibrium. You know, and so uh, the left flask is at equilibrium, and the left flask is closed off from the right flask by the valve, or the valve is closed. And so one thing that we can check, is that really at equilibrium? How can we check if this is at equilibrium? Well, we can calculate Q. You know, if Q matches K, then it's at equilibrium. So let's go ahead, and, and the first thing we'll do is we'll just see if the initial conditions are at equilibrium. Then. Then there should be no sh reaction for the you know, um, net reaction for the reverse. And so I have the N2O4 going to 2 n 2 the gas phase. And then I have a KC, the KC is 4.61 going to 10 to the minus 3. Right, um, I have been given moles, but I can't use moles. Well, I could use moles if it, they had the same molarity on the left and the right, but it doesn't. If this is one, this is two. If they were the same, then I could use moles, but 
since it's not the same, I have to convert it to molarity, which I can because they give us the moles and they give us the liters. So the N2O4 is 971 mole. Over a point seven five zero liter. And so what is that molarity? Okay, one point two nine. Okay, give me one extra digit. Five. And um, the molarity of the NO two is going to be point oh five eight oh point oh five eight oh mole over three quarters of a liter point seven fifty meter. And so what does that one come out to? Point zero seven seven three. And one more digit. Another three. Another three. So I'm just I'm carrying extra digits to try to minimize rounding error so that we can see if this is uh, So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate QC. QC is going to just be the NO2 initial square divided by the N2O4 initial. And so this is going to give us 0 0.07733 squared divided by 1.295. So what does that come out to? Give me one more digit. Actually, and then one more. Four six one eight. Yeah. Um, this is going to equal four point six one eight times ten to the minus three, which rounds to four point six two times ten to the minus three. The reason I wanted one more digit is we've got to compare it to four point six one. And so they said we were at equilibrium. The problem states that we're at equilibrium, but are we really at equilibrium? We're just slightly off. But maybe we aren't slightly off. Maybe this is due to, we're very close. This is probably due to rounding error. And so we'll just say, you know, this is at equilibrium. QC and KC are the same thing. It's at equilibrium. Well, when QC and KC are the same thing, we're at equilibrium, then we're done with the problem, right? We don't need to do the ice table because if we did the ice table, um, it comes out to zero change. And so there's no change. Are we out of time? Yeah. All right. Uh, unfortunately, uh, yeah. But you know what this problem is is they're going to perturb the equilibrium, and so we're going to upset the equilibrium, and then we've got to reestablish. So we'll finish this problem next time.